Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I have some very bullish news to share with you all. We're gonna talk about Bitcoin. It is back over $40,000 once again. And is this the breakout upwards to new all-time highs? I wanna break it down on the charts for you guys. Look at the macro level charts, of course. And also, Paul Tudor Jones went on TV this morning talking about he's still bullish on Bitcoin. He recommends allocating 5% of your portfolio to it and other interesting statistics. Um, in addition, MicroStrategy has raised their $500 million, which they're now going to use to buy Bitcoin. So definitely bullish. And we're seeing multiple countries around the world are turning bullish on crypto. They're, the sentiment is changing, and it's now to a point where where they can't ignore it. So we're going to go through all of that. Before we do, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, friendly reminder, I have a free weekly newsletter. Be sure to sign up, link in the description. Also, this video is sponsored by OKCoin. Do not pay high fees when you are buy, buying, selling, and trading crypto. Use OKCoin, which has the lowest fees around. Link in the description. And I will be interviewing Ripple CTO David Schwartz this week. We're going to talk about his proposal for the XRP ledger, uh, specifically federated sidechain. So you don't want to miss that. Make sure you got the notification bell enabled. So... Let's take a look at the market here. We're seeing some green Bitcoin near $41,000. It is currently sitting at $40,930, up uh, about just over 14% from a 24-hour perspective, up near 14% uh, as well from a seven-day perspective. So looking good, let's take a look at the weekly chart here, and we see a breakout, um, some green candles here. Now, as always, I want to keep it realistic with you guys and not be overly uh, bullish you, we got to be uh, put our emotions to the side now what's the probability of this being the breakout uh, upward I think it's high now is there a likelihood that this could be a fake out sure right meaning that look we could bounce back down to 32,000 who knows right um, before going upwards now from a macro level if he were to zoom out I believe we are still in a bull market I believe there are still higher highs on the horizon for this year and possibly into next year and this is just the volatility par for the course the corrections the consolidations and things along those lines you can't have a type of run-up like no other asset class asset or asset class sees you know with, you just look at bitcoin's trajectory and how the price moved no other assets move like this you can't have that type of bullish momentum and not expect corrections right and i think people don't put this into context they're just like give me the higher price give me the higher price it must keep going up no markets don't work that way now obviously bitcoin and crypto move at a very rapid pace but you have to also uh, look at both sides of the token, so to speak. There's going to be hard corrections, deep corrections, um, things that are going to hurt, right? You just see your portfolio drop by hundreds of thousands of dollars, so on and so forth. So that is part for the course, but that's why I always point you guys to the macro level charts. And when you look at the macro level data, we're still on track. Uh, check this chart out, the Bitcoin yearly candles. And you see, uh, you know, obviously the green have been the years we went up, the red where we had corrections, usually the bear market. So, for example, the most recent red candle was in 2018. But look at 2019, look at 2020 and look at 2021. Things are are moving uh, on the upside and you can see. Uh, from historically, we still have more to go as far as a green candle. There's still still higher highs to go. And you see the lows, which are usually uh, more of an indication of how the market's growing. You know, this year's low so far is $27,734, right? In 2017, the low for uh, that year was $751. So you're seeing higher highs and higher lows, and I think the higher lows tell the, the bigger story because it shows the increased support levels. Um, and here's another chart just showing the Bitcoin price um, across the different years. And this was for yesterday, I believe, June, June 13th. So we're just seeing growth year over year, um, slow, steady growth, and we have to be patient. Uh, patience is the key here. Now, Paul Tudor Jones went on CNBC here 
and he essentially said the only thing that i know for certain is i want to have five percent in gold five percent in bitcoin and five percent in cash five percent in commodities so obviously billionaire paul tudor jones um legendary investor let me play the clip here uh he was on cnbc this morning you last uh i want to say last spring said you know what i'm getting into crypto for the first time again i thought things were crazy then i think they're crazy now bitcoin listen i like bitcoin right bitcoin is math and math has been around for thousands of years and it Two plus two is going to equal four, and it will for the next 2,000 years. So I like the idea of investing in something that's reliable, consistent, honest, and 100% certain. So Bitcoin has appealed to me because it's a way for me to invest in certainty, where, again, I look at the difference between the Fed of 2013, the Fed of 2021. I, I'm going, how, how can this do I want to have faith necessarily? I look at the difference between Trump and Biden. Do I want to have faith in that same reliability and consistency of human nature and the linear nature of human nature, which we know is anything but that? You like Bitcoin at these prices? Um, I, I, listen, you got I, in what, oh, at about 10,000? I, I like Bitcoin as a portfolio diversifier. Everyone always asks me, what should I do with my portfolio? My employees say, I say, okay, listen, the only thing that I know for certain is I want to have 5% in gold, 5% in Bitcoin, 5% in cash, 5% in commodities at this point in time. I don't know what I want to do with the other 80%. I want to wait and see what the Fed's going to do because what they do will have a big impact. So very bullish, guys. I mean, you have one of the world's most well-known and successful investors saying he's absolutely holding a position in Bitcoin and he recommends it, right? Diversifying like you would into gold and other assets. This is significant. It's going to make uh, investing in Bitcoin and crypto the norm. People don't have to second guess it or think about it. It's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to diversify some money into gold, Bitcoin, so on and so forth. You know, this is a stark contrast from how it was years ago, right? So we are seeing a tipping point here, a paradigm shift and, and a change in sentiment and mindset and education of crypto and, and, and uh, the future of this asset class. So very bullish. Uh, you know, obviously, he highlighted what the Fed is going to do, and that has been a major catalyst as to why these institutional investors are putting Bitcoin and crypto on their balance sheet. They see inflation and they know that's going to deplete their cash reserves and their holdings, uh, the purchasing power, you know, is, 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 so they need to preserve the wealth and grow it. And Bitcoin and crypto, as Paul Tudor Jones said last year, is the fastest horse in the race. So he knows and, and the others, Stan Drucken, Miller, Bill Miller, all these guys, Ray Dalio, um, we're just seeing all of them capitulate and, and jumping into the market. Now, obviously, from a corporate standpoint, MicroStrategy is kind of leading the, the, the race here, so to speak, of uh, putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet. And I've called Michael the biggest bull in the history of the crypto market, right? He's the biggest Bitcoin bull. They've raised, um, as we reported last week and the week before, uh, another $500 million, and they're going to buy Bitcoin with that. <laughs> so he's making a huge bet, which I do think is going to pay off. Um, certainly, it's risky. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I think it will pay off for them. And we saw, you know, he convinced Elon uh, and Tesla to put uh, Bitcoin in a balance sheet, even though there's been some issues around Elon and payments. But the fact is, they're still holding the Bitcoin in their balance sheet. And we're seeing other companies do this. Now, what I'm waiting for, guys, as I've stated before, is Apple, Facebook, Google, Amazon, some of these other companies that follow suit. And I think we will see that uh, when it's hard to tell. I think sometime this year as inflation gets worse and uh, the Fed, I think we talked about it yesterday, their balance sheet crossed over a trillion dollars and they're going to prop up the, the market even more, the economy, obviously coming out of this pandemic. But um, uh, they, 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 you know, it's their fiduciary responsibility to preserve the, those, uh, the, the wealth, the cash they have, and especially when they're public companies, you know, you have you have shareholders. So uh, this is bullish, in my opinion. And Game theory suggests other companies will follow suit as we've already started to see. Now, 
crypto is global and that's what makes it very unique and and i think going to be the greatest asset class ever because it's global and there's no gatekeepers you could have a hundred bucks in bitcoin 100 bucks in ethereum 100 bucks in xrp and you're part of the asset class you're you're holding the same asset that paul tudor jones and these guys are holding the fidelities and, and so on and so forth so crypto monitoring uh, more effective than outright ban dutch finance minister says so they're warming up they're not talking about ban anymore they're talking about regulation and taxation of course just like every other asset class so the minister was responding to calls by the head of bureau for economic policy analysis for a total ban so we are seeing a pushback saying no we, we are not going to ban crypto and and i think if they wanted to ban crypto they should have done it in like 2015 2016 possibly 2017 now the genie's out the bottle the train is off the station they, they can't they, they can't stop it and it because of the decentralized nature the global nature the borderless it's all digital well, what are you going to do right how, how do you how do you confiscate that when you think about private keys and things like that so uh dutch finance minister wopke hostra <laughs> I butchered that name, said monitoring of crypto would be more effective than an outright ban. Uh, he said the Netherlands uh, Minister of Finance since 2017 and leader of the Christian Demographic uh, Democratic Appeal Party said there is no sense in a ban that would only apply in the Netherlands. Absolutely. Other countries are adopting it and regulating it. So if you're trying to ban it, you're, like I've said many times, I've used this analogy, you will become like the blockbusters of the world. You will go out of business, innovate or die, get on board, adopt or you will die. Uh, monetary policy in the country is governed by the European Central Bank and therefore a unilateral ban in a, in a single eurozone state would have limited effect, of course. So great to see people are waking up and it's like, yeah, I don't think we can ban it. Even just recently, India, they're like, uh, yeah, we're not going to ban anything. We're going to make Bitcoin and crypto an asset class. <laughs> now, check this out. Tanzania's president urges Central Bank to prepare for crypto. Wow. That's a headline right there. The president's speech follows El Salvador's adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender. What have I been saying, guys? Game theory. One country does it. No one wants to get left behind. They're all going to uh, be paying attention now and try to t be, you know, have that first mover advantage. And I think these smaller countries, like El Salvador is obviously a, a small country, and Tanzania and so forth, they, they could really benefit by adopting crypto and, and um, holding Bitcoin, right? Even mining it if they have the clean energy. So President Samia Suluhu Hassan said the Bank of Tanzania should be ready for changes and not caught unprepared in a speech Sunday, according to reports. He said, I know that throughout the nation, they have not accepted or started using these routes. However, my call to the central bank is that you should start working on that development. Um, this is interesting. So attention will be focused on other countries that spot an opportunity in crypto to boost economic development and stabilize financial instability. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of countries with obviously a lot of uh, inflation, hyperinflation, in fact, and they could benefit from this. And uh, this is a, a move in the direction of what we're seeing across the board with CBDCs from central banks, um, different digital assets. Uh, we're just going to be going to that token economy, guys, uh, the digital economy and tokenization of assets. We already see NFTs. We see you can easily buy real estate and things like that online. Now, real estate will be turned into NFTs. It's it's coming. It's coming. And um, uh, cryptos are going to be a big part of that. So that's why you need to zoom out sometimes, even when the price is down to, to understand what is taking place here? And I always use the analogy of the internet, the dot-com boom in the 90s, and how things grew from there. And you had different websites and different uh, technology solutions, and um, it grew. And look where it is it's now. It's part of our lives. And if you were invested in the Amazons, the Googles, and so forth, you did well. And I think the same opportunities here, even greater, because it's not limited to a country or a set of countries. And everybody in the world could participate as long as they have access to the internet. Um, and I think that's the majority of the world, right? And a lot of people are getting smartphones now. So when you think about all these factors, you got to zoom out and just be like, okay, let me look at the bigger picture here and what's on uh, in the coming along in the future. And, and it's, is it going to be 
you know, an easy road uh, to higher prices. No, it's going to be very volatile, as, as we talked about at the beginning of the video, right? Um, it's going to be a roller coaster ride. But that's where you need to compartmentalize or, 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 or put things in context. Okay, the market corrected. Okay, Bitcoin crash. Okay, where are we in the market cycle? Zoom out. Um, um, do I want to keep hodling? Do I sell now? Buy back later? Wh whatever, right? You just have a strategy and know what you're doing. Personally, I'm just holding straight through. I've been holding through the bear markets and uh, accumulating where possible and uh, waiting for new all-time highs. So guys, what do you think about this news? Uh, obviously, the Paul Tudor Jones news is very bullish in my opinion. Um, do you think Bitcoin, this is the breakout for Bitcoin to new higher highs, or do you think it's a fake out? Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, and I'll talk to you all later.